The question we're answering today is, how did Hitler get to power legally? I'm gonna divide this video in different parts. Each part will address a different reason or a different factor that led to his rise to power. So number one, World War I and the Treaty of Versailles. The end of World War I in 1918 left Europe devastated. Having lost the war, Germany was particularly crippled during the peace accords of 1919. These accords that were known as the Treaty of Versailles were famous for their harsh conditions on Germany. There was a lot of debate over what to do with Germany, but France demanded a crippled Germany to avoid future threat. On June 28, 1919, Germany reluctantly signed a treaty that was doomed to cripple them. The treaty included a harsh condition, such as the signing of a war guilt clause that claimed Germany was the sole responsible for this outbreak of war. Germany lost all of its colonies, a demilitarized Rhineland, 6.6 .6 billion pounds in reparations, and its army was limited to 100,000 men. These are just some of the many clauses Germany was forced to accept. German nationalism was shattered and the German economy was fragile. People were revolted by the treaty. A new republic in Germany called the Weimar Republic was set up. This humiliating treaty gave rise to extremist move movements in Germany and, sh and a shared sentiment that Germany hadn't lost the war and the politicians that had signed such a court had stabbed them in the back. People resented the politicians who had signed this accord because uh, people thought that Germany had been forced to lose the war. Furthermore, it was generally agreed upon that these conditions were way too hard. Our second factor leading to Hitler's rise to power is the 1929 stock market crash in the United States. Both during and after signing the peace treaties, both the US and Britain thought that a weak Germany was a dangerous Germany. In attempts to help the Germans rebuild their economy, the US approved a series of loans th through what was called the DOS plan. However, with the stock market crash of 1929, the loans were immediately retrieved, leaving Germany in economic abyss. There was massive hyperinflation, massive unemployment and people were dying of hunger. This led to widespread desperation and a feeling that the Weimar Republic had failed its people. Hitler seized this opportunity and gave people what they wanted to hear. After having regrouped and reformed his strategy while being imprisoned, the stock market crash was his golden opportunity. He manipulated his message to give people what they wanted to hear. People were desperate, so they started to look for more radical solutions to their problems. In the middle of so much hunger and suffering, Hitler's ideas sweetened people's ears and they began to follow him. Of course, he did not massively bombard his anti-Jewish ideology, but he framed it in a way to convince people by giving them what they wanted the most. He offered a solution to unemployment, to the hunger issue, to hyperinflation, and slightly started implementing anti-Jewish ideas as a scapegoat, saying that people were suffering because of their fault and he was gonna make it right. Most importantly, he also advertised the reversal of the Treaty of Versailles, which so many people hated and blamed for, the, for their current situation. Number three, political moves. In 1930, Germany's government, coalition government, resigned because it could not get any idea or reform passed. It was a huge mess. Germany had a president, World War I hero Paul von Hindenburg. Von Hindenburg appointed Brüning as chancellor, but he did not manage to get any bill approved by the Reichstag, which is the German parliament. By this point in time, the communists and the Nazi party had both gained momentum because there were both radical ideologies that were appealing to the masses. The Nazis now held 107 seats in parliament. The moderate parties could no longer form up the majority. Brüning, consequently, had to rule by decree. After elections in 1932, President von Hindenburg was re-elected, but he knew he couldn't appoint Brüning again. Hitler was runner-up for president in this election. 
Bruning was replaced by Franz von Papen, who was widely rejected by the public and other and other parties. In the next general election, shortly after the presidential election, the Nazis won the majority of seats in the Reichstag, making them the party with the largest control in parliament. Despite this, Hitler refused to form any coalition with other parties. So another election was held, and the Nazis won fewer seats than last time. This was due to von Papen's slightly increase in popularity because of his success in the military conference in New York. Also, the economic situation was slightly better. The army, however, refused to support von Papen. Hindenburg then appointed an army general as chancellor. Smartly, Hitler then chose to ally with von Papen, so they would isolate the chancellor and no decision could be passed. This prevented him from forming a new government. This led to the inevitable, and in 1933, January 30th, Hindenburg appointed Hitler as chancellor and von Papen as vice chancellor. Papen thought he was going to be able to manipulate Hitler into doing what he wanted, but he could have not been more wrong. The first thing Hitler did as chancellor was call for elections in March of that year. However, in February, the Reichstag was set on fire. Conveniently, Hermann Göring, Hitler's minister of um, the interior, was quickly on the spot. And the leader of the Communist Party, van der Lubbe, was found on the scene and he was charged guilty for the fire. Whether the fire was actually started by the communists or the Nazis was never really discovered because there is insufficient evidence for both. The fire was what Hitler needed to successfully pass an emergency decree which suspended basic civil liberties and provided the government with emergency powers. Hindenburg signed it after Hitler convinced him that this must be some communist plot to overtake the government. Building on the restrictions he had implemented immediately after the fire, Hitler succeeded in passing the Enabling Act, which allowed him to rule by decree and efficiently banned all political parties other than the Nazis. All of a sudden, all political opposition was crushed. Immediately after the fire, because van der Lubbe, the communist, was found on the scene, Hitler had also ordered the arrest of over 400 Communist Party members, so the Communist Party was also disbanded. In August 1934, Democratic Germany officially died when President Hindenburg died and Hitler declared himself Führer of Germany.